Support for Kalamazoo Lively Arts is provided by the Irving S. Gilmore Foundation, helping to build and enrich the cultural life of greater Kalamazoo. Art can be a creative outlet and also an outlet for creating change. Gloria Badner sits down with us to explain how she makes glassworks that carry a meaningful message. I am technically trained as a research scientist, so I did a lot of chemistry, biomedical science, and um, mathematics. And at a conference in um, Rhode Island, I happened into the Rhode Island School of Design and saw cast glass for the first time in my life. And it just bewildered me. I didn't know how they made it. I loved the look of it. It appealed to me, so I started reading. And that fall, there was a class at the KIA on sand casting glass. Loved it. Started making every free minute about making glass. Learned to make some molds, met some people in the class, and continued to sand cast for about eight or ten weeks after that. Got my first kiln, pulled it out of a dumpster. Um, someone had donated it, and the KIA wasn't interested, and they put it in the dumpster, and it had its four little feet sticking up, so hauled that home. Had a barn on this property then, plugged it in, and started casting glass. And then after a certain amount of time, this is really what I wanted to do, and I quit my day job, built a studio, and the art world's been very kind to me, so very lucky. Many times in my work, I use a combination of uh, materials and methods to get the look I want in the finished piece of glass. And one of the things that interests me is using image and text. And a way that you can do this with kiln form glass is through um, a cyanotype method that uses a iron printing material. And this is copied on to a gelatin-based paper. And then you literally, you just make the image and you cut it off. You would soak this in water and it would float up. And then you would put the glass underneath it and transfer it's now a decal to the surface of the glass and you need to let this dry. Now it looks black and white because you've used a printer ink but it's an iron based printer ink and when you fire it it has an iron color when it's finished. These pieces with image on it can then also be combined with words. In this case this is a ceramic paper that has been cut and then painted with a ceramic paint and put between two layers of glass. The paper doesn't fuse to the glass, it actually is just sealed within the glass. You can stack the glass up so you can add text and images at different layers. And this is a finished piece that has what I work with, the corn motif, with the cyanotype process here, the paper process in here, and then the edge work has some text on it that's created by sifting powder on glass and then taking the end of a pencil or the end of a paintbrush and just writing through the, the image or the, the powder. Then you put this in the kiln and fire it separately and then you can just cut strips of it and put it around the edge. My personal voice is pretty much about hunger in America. I had been working with corn for a long time and I had done this residency at Pilchuck and so I used corn because it's what I knew. And during the residency, it just took over my life. I had so many things I wanted to say with it. And you do a little um, walk through with all your three weeks worth of work on the table and I just teared up. I, you know, because you have to talk about your work and I, it was just like, I love corn. <laughs> it was just this incredible experience that I really knew what I wanted to do for the, like the next 10 years. I am going to be busy for the next 10 years working on this. And it really allowed me to submit some loose ideas I had and that's where all of this work has come about was from that residency. So to incorporate paper within two sheets of glass, you can shape it with scissors. And this is a special paper that has, a, it's all made from a ceramic material. And you can cut it that easily. You can also paint on it. 
with the ceramic paint. And these are specially made for the glass industry. Uh, you can add some detail to it. Then you can lay out your design on a base sheet of glass. At this time, you can add other glass components to it as well. You could add any um, accessory product or um, frit that's like this on this piece here. It has to be encased, like I said, between two pieces of glass like that. And then um, when it's melted together, it will be firmly attached in there. This is how it looks after it's been fired with the paint on it. I do a couple local sales. And it, even on a small object, someone will say, this is the color my grandmother had in her house. So it resonates with memory a lot. And I think the transparency and the light that um, glass captures um, makes it an interesting material for people to approach. People always want to pick it up, which is a problem for gallery owners. They don't want you to touch it, but I think you have to touch it. I think you have to touch the art here. Um, I like the fact that it's, um, you know, you've made it from the beginning. It's not something you bought off the shelf. And I think that's becoming more and more important in, particularly in glass work. There's so many products out there that make it very fun and easy for people to make glass in a small kiln, but that doesn't mean they have something to say with what they make, and that's important to me that my, my uh, work comes through and that it looks different and it might stop somebody and say, what's this about? Mm -hmm.